What's happening? This is Ryan Dawkins, and you're tuning in to The Law. I brought out the best of me. We got it, we got it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Loft. If you guys are new here, please like, comment, subscribe. And if you're not new, welcome back. Today, I have a very special guest who may or may not kill me. He is a <laughs> he is a fifth degree black belt, the, the co-founder slash founder of Balance MMA. He's partnered and co-founder of Tatsu T. Ladies and gentlemen, train like an animal, animal black belt, Ricardo Megli Reese. Thanks for having me. This is exciting. And I won't kill you. I ate already. <laughs> I have my Tatsu T here. Yeah, so dude. These are, good. like I said, I've been, I've been sipping these uh, a lot recently since I met with you guys and met with Phil and yourself and... Uh, been helping with all my hangovers oh, good. for my DJ gigs and all that. So it's been really helpful. Um, St. Patty's is coming up. So I'm going to need an entire <laughs> case, keg, whatever you guys do with them. I'm definitely going to need them. But, dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Absolutely, man. man. Absolutely. So I've been um, I've been seeing a lot of your work on social media. Obviously, we started following each other, um, connected with Phil. And he and then you came into the room and he talked about you a lot. And um I've been really heavy in the fighting recently in the, you know, the martial arts, UFC, uh, training Marquez three times, but it's like, it wasn't for me like right now, I guess with like, I'm trying to like get my schedule together. So basically making excuses for not wanting to work hard. Um, but no, so I, I've been seeing your stuff and, um, it looks great. And I just wanted to learn more about you, your story and, and how you even got like, you know, balance MMA started and, you know, it's getting, you know, I talked talk to your brother too, and there's two sides to it. And I love I love the dynamic you guys have of like the brothers you guys working together to build something bigger than yourselves and the amount of training you guys do and it's the kind of people you are so I'm excited to talk to you and have you on the pot man yeah he's the one who made me do the social media he was like you have to do Instagram I was like no I don't want to do it <laughs> and then I think I started 2019 really I, yeah I just I just got Instagram then because I remember that it was when I had to get my knee redone or maybe it was a little before that no I just just recently had it and my thing is is i don't really like interacting too much like facebook was too much interaction with people right you know I would, my whole thing was i just wanted to give back uh you know something that helped me through my whole life which was jujitsu right. i was like i just want to give back and teach people and that's what i don't want to get into all the you know talking to people arguing with people it seemed like i had the key to everybody's diary Every right. time I went on Facebook, I was like reading people, yeah. their, their headlines. And yeah, like, people. Who's not mad at their wife? Who's not mad at the husband? Who's arguing? Right. I was like, I can't do it. I just want positivity. Put this out there. Yeah, it's, you know, what's really cool that I like is someone who, like yourself who like is capable of self-defense, but like when you peel down who you actually are, it's like you're a very calm, mellow guy and you just want positivity for everyone. So I think that's really cool and definitely like adds to like the, the draw, I feel like, of yourself and balance MMA because I've been watching your videos and like you know what you're doing. And, you know, it's just, I think it's really cool to see. And, and I'm definitely curious to learn more about, you know, the whole process behind it. I know Phil mentioned it a little bit, but from your side of, the, of it, I'm curious as to how you guys got started and, and how you're able to continue the success of, of what is Balance MMA, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, originally, and exactly if you look at my Instagram, it's all self-defense. It's most of, most of it's self-defense. We do like the sport, but back when we started, there wasn't a, really a sport. There was maybe two, to two tournaments. Yeah. And really, if you go even further back in the early 90s, we had the first tournament in Maxercise. And that was maybe 95, I think it was. Mm. So it was the very first like display of a tournament scene in Jiu-Jitsu. So it's before that, all it was is a self-defense. And it was, and that's probably, I'd say, 98% of the reason why people walk into the gym now. Self-defense. It's for self-defense. It's Nobody walk, very rarely do I get anybody walking and say, "Hey, I want to be a world champion in a jiu-jitsu tournament, and I want to go to Brazil." You will because it's getting a lot more popular now mm -hmm. because of the UFC and everything. But no, self-defense is really why people walk in through the door the first the first day, and then once they get on the mat and they start really enjoying themselves and they're learning the self-defense, they get into the sport aspect of it, and then they go into tournament, and then they're like hooked. They're like, then they're hooked. Some people li love tournaments. Personally, I. <laughs> Yeah. I've fought, I fought a lot in the tournaments. Yeah. Seen? I hated every single one of them. Really? Why is that? It was just, it was, you know, it's not only stressful. I mean, 
what I loved about it was I got to travel with my friends, pile up in the hotel, mm-hmm. eat stuff like that. But the actual tournament is like nerve wracking. Yeah. In a, in a normal like in a street interaction, or if somebody comes out, it's so fast you get nervous afterwards. Right. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh my god, what do I do? Or you, you know, God forbid, if you get yeah. hurt, and you're in the hospital. You're right. like, oh my god, what happened? But in a tournament aspect. You're like thinking about you, you have like about maybe two months prepping for a tournament. To prep for a fight, so you can. Yeah. Can I curse on here? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. You can mind fuck <laughs> yourself. I'm just checking. Yeah. You can mind fuck yourself, and you're like, oh my god, this and that, and you're like in a fighter's mind. And now that I coach, and the more I coach, I, I realize that you got to watch what you say, what you do, how you handle different people because they get a really emotional, and they're 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 mentally they're like tricking themselves and they're thinking different things you got to just make sure they stay on track realize what they're doing and do the right thing it's a really interesting concept because it's like the fight or flight thing because a lot of you know 95 percent of people hate confrontation you know they don't want to fight so when you're going into like training and stuff and getting people in these classes how do you how are you getting them like ready to to know they're going into something not an altercation but they're going into a physical you know physical you know combat essentially so again like their first walk in it's hard to walk into a fight gym or whatever you want to call it. That's why Balance Studios is real, like, it's real inviting. It's not like, hey, right. you know, Dragon, Dragon mm-hmm. Fire Studios, <laughs> you know. Like, like Cobra Kai or some right. shit like you that. You walk in, you get a real, like, nice feel. Anybody who's teaching a class, whoever's there, uh, introduces themselves. If I'm in the class and they know me, I run right to them. I can be in the middle of the move. I run right to them, shake their hand. Hey, welcome here. How you doing? So I try to make it as inviting as possible because – just walking to an inside a gym like that is nerve wracking. I don't care if you're a man, woman, kid, anything. It's just nerve wracking. Right. So that's the first step is just like making them feel comfortable. Um, and also making it fun for them. And the approach with a teacher uh, mindset, mm-hmm. I have to make sure I say, I don't want to scare people, but I don't want to lie to people as well. Uh, it's a scary world. But also, you don't want to have people just being real cynical and thinking every time they got to look over the shoulder. So it's a it's a right. it's a weird balance when you're teaching. Um, I have I've had you know people have been jumped, people who have women who have been accosted, held down. You know, different things happen to them. So that's hard. That's hard to deal with. Yeah. So you have you have like clients come in and say, "Hey, this just happened to me. I'm yeah. trying to overcome this." Um, and obviously, you're no you're no you know you are no uh, beginner to conversation and combat. So like. Right. When you're, you said you didn't like tournaments, but you love to teach, right? I love it, yeah. So, right. like, when you're, so, and this is, don't take, I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase this because you've been doing it for a long time. And I feel like usually you learn from, from your tournaments and stuff. So, like, how do you continue to grow as a teacher and as, like, a jujitsu, you know, fifth degree black belt when you're not competing necessarily? Yeah, you learn. The tournaments really, you know, put you, it's good because it puts you in an uncom- uncomfortable situation, which I think everybody should put themselves in it. Mm-hmm. once in a blue moon yeah, right? that yeah. that helps you grow as far as learning you learn about yourself in a tournament you're not going to learn any new moves or anything else because you're doing most of the training and most of the fighting in your in your uh, right. studio in right. your gym and that's where all the you know the blood sweat and tears come in right and i do that every day mm. you know monday mm. wednesday i told you my schedule today monday wednesday friday saturday i'm in the gym uh in the jujitsu mm. and uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, I'm in the gym lifting or doing some sort of working you know, out, yeah, yeah, and just keeping my body strong. Yeah, and it's a it's a balance that, if you think about it, and you can ask my wife, she's like, "You're hurt all the time." This, this, and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not. Are you getting paid? But that's when you get involved in this. It's like it's addicting like that. Right. Yeah. So when you say learning, I learn every day. I learn every day. I train with everybody. You'll go to some studios and you'll see like some of the higher belts. They won't train with like white belts, which I never understood because. Mm -hmm. And I tell this to all my students, I say, if you're learning self-defense, you're probably not going to, you know, have an altercation with a a black belt on the street. Right. You know, you're probably going to have an altercation with, you know, someone has bad intentions and really they don't involve themselves in, in too much of this. So to not go with a white belt, is going to be, it's going to hurt you because when you do go with white belts, that's the closest reaction that you're going to get to someone on the street. As opposed to if I go with a black belt, 
he's going to do moves to counter me. It's going to yeah. be like a chess, more of a chess yeah, game. Yeah, if you're in a street fight, you're getting a shin kick. You know it's over. <laughs> right, right, right. So, But if you go with a white belt, you got to see some of these people come in. They're spazzing. They're flipping. They're doing right. all the wrong things. Mm-hmm. But I've seen black belts go with you know a white belt that's been doing it for a week or two, and he would like spaz out. Not for just because he's ignorant to the game. Right, yeah. You know? yeah. Not because he's trying to be mean or anything. And then black belts, they get mad. Oh, what the hell, man? You spaz. They call him spazzy white belts. And I was yeah. like, well, you should have understood that as a black belt. For me, there's there's a certain way to approach that. I love it. Right. I love. I go with everyone. I love going with white belts, especially spazzy ones, because mm. I get to control them. I don't right. need to tap them out. If I get an altercation on the street, someone's I'll hold them without even hurting them. Right. So it's kind Good. of the it's kind of the idea. Like I yeah. have a responsibility when I walk out on the street. I, I might bump into someone who's just mentally you know unstable. Right. And he comes after me. I'm in charge of two people now. I'm in charge of not getting hurt, and I'm in charge of not hurting you. Right. So it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of like in between. And then sometimes there's altercations where you have to you have to hurt people. Yeah, you know, for unfortunately. Sure. So, and it's in fear for your life. No means of retreat, kind of deal. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I'm not advocating you know, like going out and like. But when it comes to self defense, we live. In, we live in a world right now. I mean, we know everybody lives in Philadelphia. Everybody's got a TV. Everybody sees the news. We just had an incident that happened with yeah, the we, kids on the. What was it on? Uh, where at, was it? I, I just heard about it today. Actually, really recent. It was in the Northeast. Yeah, it was, and, it, and it was kids. Mm-hmm. Kids. Yes, yeah, three three guys. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. From thirteen to f- seventeen or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's insane. That's a whole other podcast, Did, man. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy, um, but no, yeah. But so I wanted. I mean, I even wanted to like touch on the uh, like the the the, con- the the tournament aspect as well because you mentioned that you learn a lot about yourself. I'm curious as to what you know you've learned about yourself in those tournaments. You, you know, I, I have a I have a specific tournament that i know i still remember till today it was the one in 1999 i went to brazil <laughs> for the first time That's right sick. i wind up i wind up placing in the world for an american to do that at that time was unreal mm-hmm. and i was only a blue belt um but i was put in a situation where i was i think it was my third fight i had like six fights that day it was my third fight uh in and i was losing I was down on points and I was exhausted. And I just remember being on the on the bottom and fighting just to, you know, to to either get a sweep or to win. But I was like my mind. I remember having a confrontation internally with my mind. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm tired, this and that. And then I heard my my coaches and everybody on the side screaming to me. And I had some sort of something came over me, and I overcame whatever like fatigue I had. Yeah. And boom! I hit a triangle choke and choked him out in less than thirty seconds. If I didn't get him, I would have lost. That's sick. And it, I wasn't even in the semifinals yet. Yeah. So I yeah. wouldn't even have placed. <laughs> yeah. So I remember getting up. You get uh, euphoric. It's so crazy. And for me, I perform better in a like. In a serious atmosphere. In other words, this like nobody spoke English. They were chanting in the background. I felt like it was like I was going to get killed. Chanting against you. So for me, the way my mind works, I perform a little better that way. Mm-hmm. Where in some tournaments, where I was like, you, you see, some sometimes you see the same people all the time, and you get friendly with them. It's like oh, I'm fighting my friend. It's like, hard I, to, it yeah. was hard for me to like really turn it on, mm-hmm. and that and I was like losing matches that way. And my coaches and my teammates were getting pissed. They're like, man, what the hell? And I was like, I don't know. But when I went to Brazil, I, I learned how to channel that. So because I had that feeling of overcoming that fatigue, and you can tell me all the time, like, it's like, oh, you can overcome it until you feel it, mm-hmm. until you do it, then you never forget it. Now, you, now I know I can do it. Yeah. Like what people tell you, you try to pump yourself up. Like, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. But there's like doubt. Yeah. There's always doubt. You're trying to convince yourself. Yeah. But when you do it, no, I did it. I know Before. it. And then I became, you know, I'm even more of an animal now. I'm like, <laughs> let's go. And I wound up placing. I wanted to win it. I was in a magazine. No way. Yeah. And uh, that did something for me, too, because I was a young kid. I was still a teenager. Uh, and, you know, around that time, nobody took teenagers seriously. And it's like, I went back and people heard that I won, you know, I won the world and this and that. And I, I was looked at a lot differently and it helped me acquire more leadership skills because mm. I had, there was so much prestige in my gym, like doctors, lawyers, judges, um, all walks of life. But normally, people that wouldn't pay me any mind. Right. And because we were in that on that platform, 
and I was like above, they were asking me questions. Mm-hmm. And that does something for yeah. kids. And I remember how I feel. So I know when I teach young kids, I allow them to have that feeling sometimes because I know if they if they have that feeling, uh, maybe that'll change their life. Maybe they'll come in more. Maybe they'll get that high. You know, they're chasing that. Yeah. They're chasing that feeling. And then and then in return, you just is like a boomerang. Like once it helps me, I got to give it back. You yeah. know, it's got to it's got to go because yeah. there's nothing else to do with jujitsu other than give back and help other people. Right, that's really cool, and that's yeah. that's a really cool experience too. Congratulations, by the way. That's, that's, <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> I know. What have you done lately? <laughs> yeah, it's still. I think it's still. I made four kids. That was. <laughs> yeah, you know. So like, and so uh, you mentioned you were a blue belt, and for like someone like myself, like I said, I I, I watch MMA, and uh, you know, I love the art of of the you know, of rolling and the jujitsu, you know, all that stuff. So could you quickly explain like the ranks? You said you're a fifth degree black belt. So like fifth degree, yeah. It it so goes white, blue, purple, brown, black. Yeah. Okay. And then you get your coral and then I don't right. even know if I lived long enough to get my red or whatever. But in between each of those belts there's four degrees. Mm. Okay. There's, there's four degrees in each in each belt, and then there was a kid system too. Like if you start before the age of sixteen, seventeen, um, you would have like white, yellow, green, and and all that. So there was a system that was introduced. That wasn't all the time. Okay. And that was introduced. And, and matter of fact, back in the old old days when Elio was still alive, they just started. There was just a blue belt, and then white belts. There was no system. Mm. And that's why if you ever meet Hoist, Hoist wears Hoist Gracie wears a, yeah. the blue belt. Okay. Because that, that signified that he was an instructor. He was just here. He was explaining it to me, too. And yeah, Phil told me he pulled up. Is, is he one of the founders of UFC, right? Is he a creator of UFC? So, is yeah. The... So, I mean, so the the family, Horian, him, the father, and all that, they wanted to, you know, just prove that jiu-jitsu was needed in a fight. Like, you needed to have this right. martial you, you art. Right, you like, boxing and you right. like that, yeah. So, in the first, like, four UFCs, the idea was, there was no such thing as mixed martial arts. That didn't even exist. That word didn't exist until later. The idea was uh, to prove that, you know, jujitsu versus boxing versus karate versus Muay Thai versus sumo wrestling, all that stuff. And you came up on top and it did its job because right. once the first three, four UFCs came and Hoist was dominating, he was, I think, 175 pounds or something like that. It was 180. People are like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell is this? And Mm -hmm. it caused people to cross train. And then people in boxing were like, oh, for the next year, the fifth UFC, seventh UFC. So Mm -hmm. everybody started doing jiu-jitsu. And that's what it became. It became, um, you know, mixed martial arts. You had to mix it up now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, if you came from a boxing, you know. And same thing applies for jiu-jitsu people. You can't just be, you know, on the ground jiu-jitsu. And you can't just be a boxer. Although, when we started jiu-jitsu came with strikes so Mm -hmm. you'll see online there's a lot there's a lot and i laugh at it too there's a lot of like people make fun of jiu-jitsu like they'll say oh somebody breaks in your house and they get on their butt like (laughs) yeah you know if you ever seen them and they do they make fun because what happened was the self-defense and street aspect started diluting itself away from it and the and the sport started you know, becoming became more of an yeah, art. Yeah, art became, form, yeah, well, became the art. Like so, when you talk about jujitsu, that's all people saw. Mm. You know, because yeah. you go online, and then you know, how, how often are you getting in a street fight? Yeah. You may never get in a street fight. Right. So I say, tell people all the time. I said, you learn jujitsu for the street the same reason why you have uh, car insurance. Nobody wants to get in a car accident. Right. Right. But in case you do, here's insurance. You cover yourself. So the same thing applies to jujitsu. If you get in a fight, please know how to defend yourself or right. get the hell out of there. Right. Yeah. You know, get the heck out of there. So because we don't train, we don't get in street fights every day, it's like people start to think like, what am I training for? Like, what am I doing? What am I training for? Yeah. So the sport, they can do a tournament every weekend now. Yeah. So I think that's that's the, um, you know, that's why people are attracted to, you know, the sport stuff. And I like it too. I've done it. I've done both. But yeah. my love stays with, the self-defense because you know people try to veer away from that and then they forget and then they think it's god forbid something happens and nowadays it's you know yeah it could cost you your life yeah it could cost your life for sure and i don't want them pulling guard and thinking like oh my god i'm forgetting so i do 
I started a week. I call it Street Week, like Shark Week. I was actually watching Shark Week one day, and I was like, I'm doing Street Week. Yeah. <laughs> so I started Street Week, and all it is is the first week of every month, and I try to stay on that first week, all my classes are nothing but self-defense. So everybody has to bring gloves in. Everybody, and I, and I have 80-year-old guy in there. I have women. I have I have every, all walks of life. All I, ha I life, have yeah. accountants that don't even want to, but they love it. Yeah. So I got and I make it so it's not just doing like this. Like you see self defense, like oh, grab the neck and do this yeah, yeah, and do yeah. that. And it gets pretty banal for mm. people. And people are like, oh, I've seen it many times. Not going to work. And how are we going to prove it doesn't work? Because we're not going to get in a fight. So I make it interesting because I put a little realism into it. And I show them why these certain moves work. And then I and Phil and I developed uh, more, like self defense moves off of that just by being in situations. Right. You know, I worked at a nightclub, so I use this stuff. I used all the time. Were you you security at nightclub? Yeah. Nice. Um, since I was six, 17, I started at 17 years old, and I think late 20s, I stopped. Oh, so nice. I, I did it for a good 10, 15 years. What was that? Exper what was that, the nightlife, the nightclub experience like for you? Oh. <laughs> well, when my book comes out when I die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a lot. Of, yeah. Mean, you learn a lot about yourself in the in the nightclub because I don't sure. drink. I don't really drink. Mm, you're I, never a drinker. I never do. Dr I have the I have the drugs. I don't drink. I don't. I'll have a glass of wine here and there. It's not that I never drank, but I right. I don't drink. You don't. Yeah, it's not yeah. who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Every That's, once in a while, maybe with my wife, I'll have a glass of wine. Yeah. But yeah, she'll yeah. drink me under the table. It's like I drink For one sure. glass of wine. She's like, yeah. 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 And so like, and I was curious about like, so you mentioned you had been in street fights before, and like, uh, what goes when you're let's say for example. You know, when you're going into one um, as a trained martial artist, what goes in your mind? What's your mindset going into that? Because I know a lot of times normal people are like, "Oh shit!" Like they get their they get their nerves built up, they freeze. When someone who's professionally trained, how do you go into that? I'm just really curious. I got so I mean, you got to practice it like anything else. You can't just do jujitsu and think like, "Oh, I'm gonna have it," because you don't ever know how you're gonna react when you have a situation. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, working at the nightclub helped me. Yeah. I had situations. A buddy of mine owned a club, Glam, my buddy Dom. He's actually one of my um, black belts and good friend. Oh, nice. So we would, like, all night we're talking about jujitsu and stuff like that. So I remember a few times, one in particular, we were on the bottom steps. And you're in a zone when you're, you know, I can go from zero to 20. So we are on the bottom steps, and I heard the bouncer upstairs going, I heard somebody say, fight, fight, fight. I went, I, and this is my buddy Dom telling me a story. He goes, you went from telling me a happy story to all of a sudden hearing that, boom, and in seconds being up there and already yeah. being. So I think that just by working in the nightclub, it helped me skip that feeling mm -hmm. and that feeling that can get you hurt. So I said, yeah. and that feeling is hesitation. Mm -hmm. So being hesitant and not hesitant with anything physical, but you have to get your mindset. Yeah, and, I, and as a security guy, I feel like your job is to protect. So you go into that knowing you have to protect and be vigilant. So like you're going to naturally put yourself online and, and yeah. try to break the fight up. I actually constructed classes uh, through my learnings in the, in the nightclub. In other words, I would, um, I would prepare a class like, all right, guys, it's street week. This is what we're going to do. We're all going to gather around like we're in a nightclub situation. Groups of people just talk to each other. I'm assigning two people. You will not know who they are. These people might hit you right away. They might get you uh, five minutes from now. So people, so my whole class, I actually had, I think I have a video of it too. I did, <laughs> Everyone's I did just it all, looking around Well, I did it time. often because I wanted to get the element of surprise. Even though I announced that I was doing it, I made people, I made them wait five minutes. Now, five minutes is a long time when you're like, all right, all right, because yeah. everybody was laughing. <laughs> everybody was pretending to talk. And then within the third minute, they were like getting comfortable and they started talking to each other. And then that's when, when I saw that their attention was veered away from like anticipation of who's fighting and that, that's when I had them strike. And you see them going, huh, huh. <laughs> so sometimes people will shut down. And this is that hesitation factor. So this is probably what needs to be, you need to be able to perform under pressure. Hmm. And just by training jujitsu every day without that pressure, I mean, you get pressure. But there's me there's a mentality that goes along with it that can hurt you. I've seen guys that yeah. were professional fighters, and it's like they've never been in a street fight ever or, or ever had their life 
uh, threatened like that, right. and they'll just like shut down. Your body will take over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a mental. Yeah, thing. I've I've seen it happen a few times, and oh, I uh, do too. And uh, and I'm curious because you mentioned mentality, and that's what I really wanted to dive into as well. Is like I know that for you know um, you know for combat sports for for fighting a lot of it is mentality, right? And so like, what kind of mentality do you need to develop in order to become you know a great martial artist, great fighter? Um, and even just a great discipline, or even a disciplined person, what kind of mentality has to go into that? I mean, you def. I mean, discipline is definitely the number one because there's a lot of things you're going to be giving up. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to like even like family time, depending on what you want to do. Like we're talking about like professional fighters. Yeah, we can go into that. Yeah. yeah so because the mentality with a professional fighter, it's like when once your fight date is set, two months before that, you. Are ignoring everything you don't go out you can't you know you whoever whatever partner if you have a wife or whatever they have to understand say listen i need to be in a certain mindset i've had fighters have like the day in and day out of you know bickering or problems with either their spouse or something's going on with their kids something's going on emotionally and it will affect everything is a factor so really when you're a fighter you have to learn how to zone that stuff out and certain people have it and certain people can't. And you can tell when people are just faking it. They're just like trying to hype themselves up and they're this and that and that. And they're like emotional wrecks. Most fighters are like emotional wrecks, man. And most yeah. of them are insecure mm. that, I've, that I've worked with. And it, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing to tap into as a coach because you will have to, you don't want to overdo it and scare them away. But you definitely want to guide them towards right. the right because you don't want them to get hurt in there. They yeah. can get, you can get hurt. You're not going in there. It's not a cooking class. <laughs> it's, like, it's not yeah. a cooking competition. You're not going to just burn yep. your hands. You mm -hmm. think about something or you shut down, you get your, you know, your lights get turned off. Damn, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really think about that. How many fighters have you trained uh, oh. in your, I mean, obviously. It's so crazy because I've never done, I haven't been in a cage. I've never. Yeah, that's, cra yeah, that's crazy to me because you, you do, you train people very well, but then you. you also yeah, I've never had, I was actually was going to do the first UFC trials the ultimate fighter mm -hmm. back in 20 I think it had to be 2005 but I tore my knee but I never had I never wanted to do it but I always wanted to try it so I was actually on a, a show to do it and it got canceled because it wasn't legal in Philly oh really yeah I was actually on a show to do it at the vet mm. I think it was the vet that's how long ago it was shit yeah and um never had the desire always loved the street aspect that was my main niche and my main goal and, and, yeah. it, and it's always been and i don't have any like regret not doing it for sure you know because i've trained with ufc fighters i've trained with those guys stepped in my gym and i get in it with them yeah you know yeah so i know i have you know what it takes to do it but man those guys work hard yeah man i've those listen, guys work yeah i've dove i've really dove in deep into the ufc and the just the even athletes like i sponsor athletes now yeah. and like just seeing the work that goes into their fights is just like it's not it takes oh, so yeah. much respect i got so much respect for them because that discipline's crazy but. i got guys that are so joe pfeiffer he was yeah he i've known him since he was five i trained him up till 2020 a lot of the guys had to leave because of the um COVID? Lo lockdown Really? And we had to close down. But when we close down, fighters don't stop. And I love mm. those guys. Joe Pfeiffer, yeah. Basil Hafez, he's got a fight coming up. He's a hardworking. I mean, that dude is hardworking. Really? You talk about discipline, he won't let anything phase him. He's had so many trials and tribulations, like with injuries and stuff like that, Yeah, that he had to overcome. You know, I talk to these guys. I'm I, These guys call me. They, as tough as these guys are, you know, they have... You know issues too there's layers to them yeah there's yeah. layers to them so they need somebody to guide them in the right place and i feel like i i do a good job doing that nice um i know bill algio is fighting i trained trained him before i corner all these guys um andre petrowski he's fighting yeah. at the end uh and in, 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 um i'll see him saturday he comes to me every saturday I help oh, him nice. out. and that's my main i never wanted to be like some crazy coach i only wanted to help these guys yeah i never took a dime off of any of these guys not that it's a bad thing but that's not my it's not right. what i do for a living right so there's yeah. guys out there that that's what they do for a living okay yeah you take a percentage of the purse but anybody who's ever fought with me you're just i'm sorry whoever trained with me right i just say listen pay your dues do something i said i'll help you i'll go out far and beyond to help you and i and i feel like i have i've that's great i i've did it since the beginning tim carpenter was a very good friend of mine he he actually bounced with me too he was the first person <laughs> that i ever cornered uh, -uh. <laughs> because it's like when it started getting legal 
Right. Uh, I think it was Sport Fights, I believe, and it was Frankie Edgar's first fight too. Really? I was at Frank. I was at Frankie Edgar's first fight and his last fight that just happened. Really? Yeah, he's a great dude too. That's so his, he yeah. fought on this show. That's how long ago that was. That <laughs> was his first MMA show. That's I believe. sick. That's and, awesome. Uh, Tim Carpenter. That was the first guy I. And I did it as, as his friend. I was like, all right, I'll go in there. We, we, there was no like. What was that experience like? Oh, it was awesome. He won. He's a beast. Oh, he won? That's uh, sick. He's, they don't make him like him because he, and I say this all the time, you'll get fighters who are winning and everybody, everything's okay. And then as soon as they lose, it's everybody else's fault. I got to change my camp. I got to do this. Yeah. It's never their fault or it's never, there was whatever. Yeah. And Tim never blamed anybody for anything. And he was a machine, man. Yeah. He was a machine. And if he made a mistake, even when he won, he just overcame everything. That's awesome. Do you have, uh, you mentioned like fighters are like losing and overcoming stuff. Is there anything you've had to overcome in this life that you, that's really stood out to you? That's really like helped shape who you are and like your mentality now? Um, I mean, I, I think we always, I'm doing that always. Right. I'm, I'm overcoming yeah. stuff always. I mean, if we go back from the very beginning, I was, you know, fighting in the street, getting in trouble, um, doing stuff that normal teenagers would do. And then jujitsu helped me. I came to that fork in the road. It was like, I get to either go stay in the gym. And then I had an incident that happened mm -hmm. on the street where I realized the kids, the people who I, I was hanging out with really didn't have my back. Right. So I went, made my move to the gym and I stayed in That's the gym. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, and then you'll have, and I had normal trials and tribulations too, that jujitsu, just from being in the art, it helps you solve problems better. So just by doing jujitsu, it's going to help you, you know, whether you got to, uh, you know, answer a choke right away or whether you have to hold yourself so you can take your time to figure it out, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah. jujitsu helps you, you know, solve problems, solve issues, yeah. overcome things. So yeah, so you're doing it, it every day. Yeah, it translates, well, it translates into, you know, business, right. into family life. Yeah. Anything, anything and everything. Jiu Jitsu is going to help. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And then it's, it's, that's like what I've noticed even training. And like when I first started was like, just even the few workouts that I would dip into, like you could definitely tell it challenges your body and like even something as small as ice baths that I'll do every now and yeah. then it challenges your body. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I wanted to also like, you know, you're, you're, you mentioned like your early life and childhood, like you mentioned, you were, you were with some ba a bad crowd and cause I really wanted to get to, um, how you, you know, started making a passion a career essentially and like when you started you were you know you see so you mentioned you were in a rough place in your rough spot and then you eventually took that you were in the fork in the road and took the, the training aspect of it so when did um what like when did the the fun of it and the training aspect become the career like when did this really start picking up to be like a career so that was an accident mm. so right off the bat once you step on the mat especially back then it was so addicting mm-hmm and the feeling was so addicting because you would have good days when you have bad days. Bad days you would you would chase to overcome that bad you know whatever happened that day. And then the good days made you feel good. So you were constantly in the gym. So I was prepared to get a job, whether it was a union job, in it, so I can just do this every day of my life. Mm. I was prepared just to work, just to do jujitsu, and it just so happened because Phil and I became we were the you know forefront of. Like, Philadelphia Jiu Jitsu. Right, yeah. And we were the first ones ever to do it. We were, you know, placed with the, an opportunity to teach. And then from teaching, it's like, oh, other people are addicted to this too. Oh, okay. Mm. People, oh, I can help people out. I can, and it, the avenues just started opening up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're blessed. I mean, honestly, we're blessed yeah. to be able to, you know, not only, you know, make a living doing this, yeah, but also have like a terminal where we can meet all these great people. Yeah, right? it's like being in an airport and you just keep meeting <laughs> people. They keep coming in and yeah. look. I've had guys that do jujitsu all the way in Australia, Italy, whatever. They would get a hold of you on the internet. They would come in. It was like you knew them your whole life. That's really cool because you share this common bond of jujitsu and everybody. It's like the same addiction out there that it's over here. Yeah, and it's it sounds like thing. it sounds really cool. It's like it's a community community you built just from off of a passion yeah. and. And how do you um how do you foster that? So how do you you know you have you start with something you realize oh I have like you know this gym people are starting to get interested in it. How do you grow that and how do you foster that community? So the idea that Phil and I had, we wanted to create a place where people were comfortable. First of all, we didn't want to have like that Cobra Kai feel or like right. Yeah. We wanted people to be able to walk in and not have to walk on eggshells. So we're not like a traditional like martial arts school. You have to bow and everything. 
but we do believe in respect and I think the mutual respect comes but we're basically we're family based though like mm-hmm. people come in we're, we're bullshitting we're yeah. hanging out yeah. I'll have guys that if I see them they're having a bad day I'm like you okay man I was like look you hit me up with a message later if you have something to talk or people are going out and it's just it's that kind of spot you make because, yourself accessible yeah well if you I mean look in men and women doesn't matter where you are things are going on in your life you don't have anywhere to go it gets it gets you know builds in inside unfortunately right. it's like today i feel like suicide is 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 greater than anything and because yeah. people don't have an outlet mm-hmm. and nowadays it's just like shit man everything's going to implode on people and if they don't have that means of outlet or talking to somebody if they can't get it at home if they can't get it at work you know ma- imagine yeah. being married to someone you don't like imagine going to wow. a, a uh, to a job, job you, you hate, hate. Mm. you know, that's 75% of your day. Yeah. So I tell people all the time, I'm like, look, if you can look forward to one thing every day, just look forward to one thing every day, you got a good life, man. Right. You have a good life because there's no, <laughs> I can't teach any technique that's going to stop any kind of frustration or any kind of, you know, aggravation. My dad had a saying, he used to say, aggravation's like the mail, comes every day. But if you just <laughs> let it pile up and bullshit, it's going to overcome you. But right. if you organize it and have a plan, then you can, you know, you can, you can handle it. I like that. That's pretty yeah. cool. And so you, you mentioned your dad a few times. Is he, was he a big part of your life and big part of your journey coming huge, up? Huge, huge part yeah. of my journey. I think Phil and I can agree uh, huge on that because he's the one that molded us from the beginning to, you know, it was, it was very uh, militant, I guess I can say in my house. Like we weren't allowed to, we didn't get away with anything in the house. Right, like, it was yeah. very like, you had to shut the fuck up, sit down. He never cursed. Mm. He'd kill me if you heard me curse him. <laughs> but he uh, he handled stuff, and he used anything in any situation as an opportunity to teach you. Mm. Which now that I have four kids, and now that I you know businesses and stuff, I'm like, man, he was a goddamn genius. I hate that he, he was yeah. right all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was exhaust me. He used to exhaust yeah. me. If I look, he he divorced my mother. I think I was like around ten or something. I forget. And but he was always in my life. Right. You know, if I if I gave my mother any lip, there was no disrespecting women. We, I had a sister and a mother, and he was not about that. You disrespect, you talk back. I don't care if it's your sister, uh, you will be seeing me. And he right. showed up. Did he that up. um, did that divorce have any impact on you? No, no. People ask me that all the time. Really? I just you know what it was. I I was a smart kid. I saw how unhappy my mom was, and I guess my father was. You hear that stuff, and um. I remember my mother brought, she was in the bathroom doing her makeup and she was like, I think she presented this like, would you feel okay if dad moves? And I was like, yep. I, th- I don't even think I let her, I said, yeah, ma, as long as you guys are happy, that's it. Mm. And we went about our day. But I think half of it was, man, when he's out of the house, I'm going to get her, I'm going to get her some shit. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. as soon as he left, I was like, it was almost like someone gave me the keys out. Mm. So I don't know if that was good or bad because it molded to me, molded me to what I am today uh, allowed me to experience stuff that I, I learned from, you know, I had, I had a lot of experiences on the street that I was like, shit, man, I should be dead. Yeah. You know, and, and not even me doing anything. It was just me being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. And I was like, Oh my God. And my father knew, and my father knew that that's what he was trying to keep us away from. But, um, is there, is there anything that your dad like instilled in you that you take, throughout your entire life that like I know you mentioned before what he said to you but um about like uh, opportunities was there did, anything? You, did you ask Phil this uh I don't did I I don't know if I did we we did come I'm up I'm just curious if we're gonna say the same thing well let's say well let's what do you what did your dad instill in you he would always say master yourself mm. <laughs> and master. I guarantee you Phil, Phil would have said the same thing or a whole laugh when he hears Phil, this I think you spoke high, uh, really about mastery is, yeah was, so he, yes. my father used to say yes. you have to master yourself because we had bad tempers Mm-hmm. The big Larissas have bad tempers. It's a, and it's it's we're we're highly emotional. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. we love what we do. Like we're very like, but you had to learn how to channel that. And he was very good, super calm, and the beast can come out when the beast needs to come out. Mm. So it's that old saying. It's like you you want to have that beast in you, right? But you want to have you want to be uh, responsible when it comes out. You know, not for right. bad things. Control, you know? yeah. yeah. Do you, oh, I was going to ask you, I don't want to cut you off. Do you have like, uh, when you're going into like an altercation or, or something that y- you need to check and assert the situation, is it, what do you, is there anything you go into telling yourself before you go into it? Like it's like there's like an argument or something like that. 
alter like a altercation Look, on the street. Let's say, for example, there is an argument between two students, and uh, how would you go into something like that? So, for, I mean, first you gotta get there. Timing's always the key. Like whether you're at the, the heat of the argument or if it's dying down, but usually the heat of the argument is gonna get into something. So, getting right over there, pulling them both aside, talking to them both, letting them cool down. So if you ever approach something in a heated situation, it's always going to be un, you know a heated answer. Mm. Oh, fuck him, he's like, fuck it, oh, fuck. So <laughs> yeah. you calm it down. You put you 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 cool down a little bit. Mm. You even let I even let some stuff set for a day or two or a whole week, and then they right. come back. And a lot of people's like, dude, I apologize. I should have never did that. And I'm like, yeah, I said because you know maybe you said some things were wrong, and maybe he said some things were wrong. We're not going to be in here judging people because we created a place where all walks of life come in. We have all different religions. We have all different, you know, cultures. We have all different, um, you know, ideas of people that come in and we share the mat together. I love that. I love looking around and seeing all different types of people and getting along. And that's what the kind of world I really want. Mm -hmm. So I always tell, I tell Phil all the time, like, man, look, we created a world where we can stay away from all the bullshit. And we can come in and we can actually learn about people. We can actually, I love culture, even though yeah. I'm not like super religious. Yeah. Uh, my wife is, but you know, and I learn from her and I get it, but um, I do like culture and I, and I enjoy other people's culture. So it's like, uh, I remember I went away one time to Canada and I was um, the girl there. Her father let me stay at the place and they were from, they were from Israel, but um she had a, what's the Friday dinner Saban or so I think it's yeah 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 so they they yeah, asked me if I wanted to and she was a jujitsu person she they were like okay you 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 don't have to join us I was like I'll join you I was like and I want to wear the kippa too you know <laughs> so, so I yeah, did, yeah. and I was you know they were nice enough I just wanted to to explore really the cool. culture and that's with any culture that's really any cool. culture that's a really good way to look at it too well it should be it's, you, people are scared of different people and different cultures and different stuff and I'm like look we're here to enjoy each other. Right. We're here to have fun. Mm -hmm. We're here to like, you know, we're not here to argue all the time. I feel like all this bickering stuff not only takes a lot of energy away from you or the day, it wastes time. Right. I'm 45 years old. Right. I know some people are like, you're young, but it's like, yeah, I'm 45. I may have 45 more years. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Did I meet all the people that I want? Did I experience everything that I want to do? I want my kids to do this, you know, grow up like I did. Right experience that and i don't want yeah. them to have to deal with all this like you know yeah and you uh and you said you're not really religious um i'm curious because i feel like everyone needs something to uh, at least like a, a mantra they go by or a way of life that they go by like for me myself i'm like i consider myself spiritual I went to catholic school yeah. but to me i find myself more spiritual more energy based of like how people are how people treat me is how i treat people and then vice versa like i want to treat people with respect and come out with kindness and that's how i want to convey myself is there something since you you know you're not religious? To, everyone has to live by something. Is there something you live by? Is there it's, um, is there like a like a code or something? Like a code, I guess so. Yeah. Like how do, how do you go about life? And, I mean, I get know. like religion. We I grew up Catholic as well, so right. I mean the whole thing is hey, do good to others and da 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 da. da. So I, I I think the message is the same. Right. You know, I think I, I'm not too keen on everybody else's religion, but I I feel like it's always like you do good, you get this. If you do bad, you get this. And I feel like that teaches. You know, yeah. if you don't, I feel like the absence of it can do harm. Mm. You know, like if you don't have something like that in your life, someone to tell tell you, hey, look, you shouldn't kill people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people are going to be like, fuck, I could kill. nobody right. ever told me I didn't have to. Right. So there, there's a moral aspect of it. I'm very mm. like, uh, uh, the... The treat people like you want to be treated aspect is important. It's very real to you. Because, well, that's how you can associate. You don't know how other people feel, but it's like, all right, we're all human. I know I don't like to get punched in the face. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. assume you don't like to get punched in the face right, too, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's how, you know, that's how yeah. you deal with it. And I'm curious as to what helped get you out of that place too. I know you mentioned you were in the, the wrong crowd, etc. Was it your dad that really did that or were there a friend? Combination. Like, yeah. Combination. Look, I, I was at a time in my life. I was a wild man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my brother was a huge influence. My mother was a huge influence. And my father was a huge influence. And jujitsu became a huge influence. So I think the combination of jujitsu and what I was hearing from my parents and my brother all correlated. Everything was like, everything was the same. It's like, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. This, this is ingredients with this. So right. my dad tells me I got to work hard to get something. Oh, jujitsu is not telling me, but it's physically telling me, oh, you better work hard you or you're not good, and you're not the shit. 
You're, right. It's humbling, and I'm humble till today. I don't ever think I'm the shit. Right. I said that's my superpower, that I know I'm not the shit. I like that. It is. It's yeah, like, and yeah. because I know that, I'll wake up every day and I'm appreciative. Mm. Some people who think they're the shit, they're like, oh, you see that sun? Yeah, that's up because of me. Yeah. I wake up, I'm like, man, look at that sun. Yeah. I don't know how why it's here, <laughs> but I appreciate you being here, son. Yeah. Flower, oh, I appreciate you being here. Oh, I go to the gym. Thank God I got both of my legs. Thank God I can have the ability being to do grateful. this. Being grateful, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, and I think you're missing out a lot because, you know, social media is good. Social media is also bad. It's like anything good and great, it can be evil that goes along too. It's all about how you use it. Yeah, and I feel like people are lost in their in their social media. I think people are addicted to it. Um, I can be addicted to it sometimes. I'm like, you find myself like scrolling through things. Yeah. I'm saying, and I have a peace of mind to put it down. But right. kids well, today, they don't have that. Yeah. How old are you? Twelve, twenty-seven. So you're twenty-seven. So, oh, no, you always had. You always had phones. Yeah. So I'm, we're like the last generation who grew up with no technology and are ending with tech. So I know what it's like right. without it. So nobody else's generations are never know what Yeah, you're first. You yeah. Consider yourself, what are you, a boomer? Yeah, right. I, I don't even know what the hell I'm <laughs> I don't even know. 78, dude. shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm lucky to be alive. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I, and I like that. And like, that's the way I've been going about life as well. And like, because like, I, I, it's funny. Like I was telling Phil, I, um, came up March 3rd, I think it was, was my first uh, opportunity in nightlife that I got from my friend Jason Weiss, who like, you know, he's been a real good mentor of mine, friend of mine. And uh, I sent him that screenshot of my schedule being, because that was the first time I, I would open up for him at a nightclub. And like, that was my first opportunity. And ever since I've gotten that opportunity, I've been told, you know, by him and then just to people's like, hey, the same people you meet on the way up, the same people you meet on the way down. And like, I always try to go into something as like me, one that I can learn something. That's why I, I, I something small, but I always take requests because I know I can always learn something from the crowd. I pick up data information. Um, and two, I just feel like life's more fun that way when you're just like you go into something knowing you can learn something, knowing yeah, you, you challenge yourself. It's, and it's an opportunity to work with somebody. And, you know, I've been very fortunate and that's the way I, I that's the way I think about my life is just like, I'm very fortunate of the opportunities I have. And like, I'm able to make a full, you know, a full career out of DJing, which I'm very grateful for. It's like, I just feel like it only makes you feel better. And it only makes you better. Cause there's always opportunities and like opportunity. And is the biggest thing too, uh, for me is like when you, see an opportunity it's all about how you take it and how you perceive it and and whether or not you execute on it you know and just taking the opportunity can take you so many different places you know and with that mentality you're going to grow so much that you're going to find yourself at a level now you're going to help other people exactly that's the number one thing yeah so first yeah. you got to help yourself yeah you got to build yourself up and you can mm -hmm. do little things but your main goal should be you want to get so good and so uh, you know far to your goal that in return you're helping the people around you yeah. And if everybody does that, that spiral effect is just going to like, everybody grows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you create the community, you create the, mm -hmm. um, the yeah, you, you just create a community and ecosystem, which, yeah. which you've done with Balance MMA. Yeah. And speaking to, you know, the the youth and to someone who, you know, wants to get into whether it's uh, some kind of art, like, you know, like, like jujitsu, um, what are some things you would tell someone, aka your younger self, that like, you know, going into martial arts or someone wants to pick up a, a hobby or something, some type of yeah, just, thing, what would you say to them? Just make sure you're searching for something that you're passionate about. So, mm -hmm. and you would be, you'll be a lucky man if you can do for a living what you're passionate about. Right. And that's the goal. Like nobody really, we're, I mean, really, we're not even supposed to work. Right. Like, like it's not natural to work for humans. Yeah. It's not yeah. natural to say it. We're not built for this stuff. Yeah. So imagine, you know, having something that you don't like to do and you're doing it, you know, you know, seven yeah. days a week, you know, nine, nine hours a day or whatever it is. So definitely be passionate about it and be open, be open to experience different things. Cause I, I wouldn't, I didn't know I was going to like jujitsu. Yeah. You know, my brother yeah. went in there first. He was in there three years. I was like, I'm not doing that shit. I'm like, get out of here. I'll punch you right in your face. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And then he came home, choked me out a few times. I was like, I guess I got to try this. I <laughs> <laughs> Let me go check it out. Yeah. While you're looking at the ceiling. And right. Ceiling. And I tried it out. And you realize, oh, this is more than just fighting. This is hanging out. This mm -hmm. is this this is this is hanging out with people. This is absorbing information, absorbing different types of people. Uh, if I'm in a jam, oh, my God. My dentist is the black belt. My lawyer is the black belt in jujitsu. Uh, my chiropractor is a black belt in jujitsu. You have such a like, it's such a great network in this. Right. And I'm using jujitsu an example in my life. 
So it, you don't have to do jujitsu to be happy. I'm not saying that. Yeah. But make sure whatever you're involved in, it has that kind of ecosystem like you're talking mm-hmm. about. Like it was a perfect example. So if you have that and you can work within that, then you can touch different lives and different styles. Right. Like, look at this. I never thought I'd be involved yeah. in tattoo tea. Yeah. You know? In fact, I had a, I wasn't even into supplements like that. Phil had to like convince me to do this. And he was like, just try it. So I did a 22, 22 day challenge. With tattoo tea. What was it? So it was, I replaced my water intake that I do during training, and I'm training every day, with just tattoo tea. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Give me 22, and my brother gave them to me, and I and I did it. Because I'm always trying to constantly, constantly mm. challenge myself. So <laughs> I got I to gotta admit, I can do 20 matches. Right. Uh, I can push, I've been doing it for 30 years. That's not the problem. Yeah. Where the difference I saw is when I got home. Because usually I go home, I crash. My wife You're makes me tired. Duh, yeah. The kids, I'm barely picking them up. I came home from that. Even my wife saw a difference. My wife was like, oh, my God. I was like, yeah, I'm going to take the dog out. I'm, uh, uh, does Adelina want to go out? Does Frankie want to go out? Does Nat- Nat- Natalia, Alessia, let's go out. Let's go do something. Let's go. You want to play? I had energy. And it wasn't like jittery energy. So then I got scared. I'm like, what the fuck is in this? I said, are they putting <laughs> cocaine in this shit? Yeah. So yeah. I got involved. I was like, and I only get involved in things I believe in. I drop mm-hmm. plenty. I have, you know, I show you my Instagram. If people want to do do things, want me to get involved in things. And yeah. I say no all the time. And people want me to do like, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Like, like they give me their stuff and I do. Oh like, yeah, like ads and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And I say, send me the stuff. I said, but I, I always warn them. I said, look, I'm going to give my honest opinion. Right. So when you send it and you want me to make a remark about it, make sure right, yeah. <laughs> you know what you're doing. I said, I yeah. will only endorse things that I believe in. That's awesome. And I had people offer me money doing it. I was like, I just don't like it, man. Yeah. It just doesn't, I can't do this. I can't do it. Right. You don't want, I, yeah. Same thing with jujitsu. I had uh, karate studios in the past say, hey, can you come teach jujitsu? And I was like, absolutely. I said, look, I said, it's a program. They're like, no, no, no. Can you just put like four jujitsu moves together? And then so we can say we're offering jujitsu. And I'm like, but we'll give you this money. I've had money handed to me. I was like, listen, jujitsu doesn't work like that. This is not like a four move system. Mm-hmm. You have to have a program where you're building people and, there's a whole. I mean, it's an experience. It's, it's in, infinite. I mean, there's not. There's you can't. It's not. You can't just like put these things together. And think yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be lying to your students, and I can't be a part of that. You can't mm. put my name to that. Right. So they're like, no, but we're gonna give you money. I said, yeah. I said you can give it to somebody else. I'm, I make good money. I'll, I'll do yeah, it another way. Use your gut. And because how would that look, man? Jujitsu changed my life. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna sell out jujitsu like that. Hell no. You'll never see that. Right. You, know, so you talk about having like. Having a world and having a code, that's the code I have. If mm-hmm. I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I like that. I respect that. Yep. I don't care if I like you or if I don't. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it for you. And that works with not t- with telling you I'm not going to do it. So people are like, I got decided. I said, I can't do it. And they're like, well, you didn't even hear it. I said, listen, I like you so much. I can't promise you that I'm going to do this right now for you because I don't know 100%. And I'm not a yeah, yeah guy. Yep. You know what a yeah, yeah guy is? This says yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? They're all over Philly. Yep. Half of them live in South Philly. <laughs> yeah, I call them the yeah yeah yo bos. <laughs> I'm like, oh god. I ask you a favor. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Week later, they forget it. So right. I can't do that. I, I I'm a man of my word. I never cheated on. Like I yeah. don't do that. Right. I, I don't like the locker talk. You're I don't just go a out. solid dude. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm solid dude. I just I think it's that I'm so OCD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't want to give myself too much credit. Like right. I'm like. But um, yeah, I respect. So. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and so I that's and that, you think that's something you just acquired over experience, time, and just the years. I, and well, my father instilled that, like mm-hmm. like being late. I'm never late for anything. Like I was in my car waiting for you. Hell yeah! yeah you texted me at one four, or was yeah, it? I was actually time? I was actually 15 minutes before I texted you in my uh, car. No way. Yeah, I parked right over here. <laughs> I'm I'm an I'm you I'm sometimes an hour early for things. That's sick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, my father was a stickler. Now I get uneasy. Like when mm. when when people are late for um, a meeting or anything that you have involved where you promised them, if you're late for somebody, I don't care who it is, you're telling that person that they're not as important as you are and they're not important enough for this. So when people are late for me or saying, I'll take like one day, like, oh, it's traffic? Okay, but when you're you have a consistency, you're telling me something with your actions that you're saying that I'm not important enough for you to be on time with or you don't respect my time. Mm. And time is everything for me. 
You can yeah. steal money from me all day. I'll make money. You take my fucking time from me. We got a we got a problem. Mm. We got a problem. I don't want to waste time. I could be spending time with my kids. I yeah. could be walking my dog right now. I enjoy that stuff. I can be at the gym. I can be doing this. But you're wasting my time. Right. You know. Do you have a and this will we'll wrap up with this, but like do you have like a core um are there some pillars you have in life? You, you mentioned you you value time extremely. What else do you What else do you value? I value time. I value family very much. I think like the family structure is important. I feel I value a relationship with somebody. I feel like you should have a partner in life, which thank God I, I do now. She's she's awesome. My yeah. my, my girl now. She's married you guys are it's your wife right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. How, you guys been together for a minute i assume uh so we've been yeah we've been i've known her since second grade oh wow yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the whole other pot isn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah she knows me better than everybody <laughs> yeah it's awesome it, 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 yeah it's uh I, I feel like having that person is is so huge like i said i was i, I just got a, a girl and she's been nothing but amazing she's gonna be a lawyer this summer so that's awesome she's killing it she, i'm gonna need her yeah yeah, yeah she, she's here she, i'll introduce you when really? we're done but she's awesome. she's awesome man but it keeps you level and that's it and that's important and everybody's like well what kind of do you get a girl to i said get somebody in your life that compliments you they don't have to be the same they don't have to be, you don't have to be total opposites yeah it's somebody that can pick up your you know i you, love you, you I, yeah i love you just said that by yeah. the way that's why we talk about it all the time like like you know, I said I appreciate you because you compliment me. You don't complete you complete me. You compliment yeah. me. So it's like you have yourself, I have myself. But at the end of the day, we can come together and make something greater. You yeah, know? you know why my my girl and I work so well, hmm. and we say this all the time, because she knows that she doesn't need me, and I know I don't need her. Yep, we'll be fine without each other. Yep, we stick around because we love each other. Facts, because we want to be around each other. I love that, and that's and yeah. it's like I feel so many people are like, no, I just need them. They're like. And then, and then there's a power with the with the person who's needed that's saying, yeah, she's not going to leave or he's not going to leave because he needs me. Yep. That's not a relationship. That's a no. that's a stressful. I it's, don't want to go home and be stressed. It's a stress. Out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's that's so awesome. many different. There's so many different places where you're going to be stressed out in life, where your home should not be one. Don't make it your home. Right? No facts. No. I love that. Well, dude, thank you for coming on the pod, man. This is a dude, great thank pod. Thank you. Thank you for repping the merch. Thank you for bringing the Tati dude, Tees. Let's dude. do a toast. Here you go. Cheers, man. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. To the podcast, baby. Cheers to the love. <laughs> Cheers to Tati Tees, man. I, uh, this is great stuff. And like I said, I can't wait to work with you guys in the future. I've been talking to Todd a lot, Phil all the time, and awesome. and now yourself. So like I said, I love what you guys are doing. I love Balance MMA. I'm going to have to check it out and roll a few times. You know what I mean? Get myself in there. You yeah. Know? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude, I, I really appreciate you coming on. And um, it was great, man. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you so much. Well, ladies That's and gentlemen, right. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm Kevin Nichols. That's Rick Megalerese. Peace, guys. Peace.